In today's video, we will make an interactive 3D cube using only HTML and CSS. Let's talk about how it's going to work. A cube has six sides, and for our case, all the sides will be symmetrical. We will use perspectives, which basically means how far away the user is from the screen. This is important because we want to establish a fixed 3D space. We also need to think of the cube as a container instead of a shape. Our cube will contain sides, and the cube will be a container inside a 3D space. With all of that out of the way, let's get coding. As always, we will need an index.html file to hold all our HTML code and an index.css file for us to write our CSS into. A good reason to not write CSS code within your HTML file is that it makes your code clutter up and therefore your workflow is much more difficult to manage. Starting off with HTML, the first thing you need to do is, in your head tag, make a link tag and set its href to index.css. This will allow us to use index.css in our HTML. In the body, we will have an app div. This is where we will put all our code into. Inside the app, we will make a space div, and the space div will have cube inside. The cube itself will have six sides that I'm giving a common class of side and then S1 through 6 to individually assign them styling. I'm also naming them A through F so that it's easier for us to see which side we are working on. Our cube will act as a container as well, so make a content div and fill it with some text as well. And with that, let's move on to CSS. Firstly, let's get rid of the body's margin and set the default font family to Arial. Our app will occupy the entire space, so set its width to 100VW and height to 100VH. We also want everything inside to be at the center and spaced evenly just in case we add more things inside. I've chosen to add a linear gradient background, something dark and spacey should feel good. The cube will have a fixed width and height. I'm setting them to 20VW. We want everything inside the cube to be at the center so that we can position them better. Also set the position to relative. Let's come to the sides. To set everything to the center, you can do display to grid and place content to center. Set the color to white for better contrast. Let's also increase the font size. We want to position the sides relative to the cube, so set the sides position to absolute. You can give it any default background color as well. I'm setting the border to 0.1 EM solid black and giving it a brighter box shadow for a glowing effect. Many of you probably don't know this, but you can have variables in CSS. We will use variables for the size and rotation. So write colon root because we want the variables to be accessible everywhere type dash dash size and set it to 150 pixels. We also want to store the negative of the side, so write dash dash n dash size calc variable dash dash size multiplied by negative 1. Now now, I'm not going to narrate this horrible CSS out, so just copy what I'm doing. We basically need four variables for sizes. One for the size, one for negative size, one for half the size, and one for its negative. Then we need two variables for rotation and the negative rotation. Any calculation you want to run should be done inside the calc function. And to use the variables, write the variable name inside the var function. We are using variables so that we can avoid unnecessary hassle in the coming future. We will also be able to change the values faster to test out anything we want. It's a win-win for everyone. You can also use any units provided in CSS to make your variables. Meaning, if you say calc 100vw minus 50 pixels, it will work. Once you're done making those variables, set the sides width and height to dash dash size, and set the cursor to pointer. Now I want to rotate the cube whenever we hover into the space. So type space hover cube, and set the transform to rotate y 360 degrees and rotate x to negative 30 degrees. Let's add a perspective of 900 pixels to the app, and a perspective of 100 pixels to the cube. We also want the transform style to preserve 3D so that it looks 3D. If you add a transition of 1 second to the cube, it will flow smoothly. Also add a transition to the sides. Now let's handle the side hover. All we need to do is add 10 pixels to the sides width and height. Coming to the individual sides, I'm going to give them somewhat of a different background color and move them around a bit. S1 will move half the size forward towards us, which is the positive direction in the Z axis. 
S2 will do the opposite by moving backwards half the size in the Z direction. S3 will move forwards by half the size in the X direction and have a rotation in the Y axis of 90 degrees. S4 will do the opposite, move it to negative half the size and give it a negative rotation. You might have noticed that we are applying the transforms and the inverse transforms to pairs of sides. S1 and S2 are inverse of each other, S3 and S4 are inverse of each other, so S5 and S6 will be inverse of each other as well. They will translate in the X direction but rotate in the Y direction. So let's add the interfacing part. On cube hover, target S1 and set its transform to translate Z size. Same with all other sides, simply replace the half with size. Let's come to the content. We want to make its font size a little larger and color to white. We also want it to only display when the box is open. So set its display to none and add a transition of 0.2 seconds. On content hover, increase the font size and on cube hover, set its display to block. Let's summarize what we learned. First, you can use variables in CSS. You can also run calculations with them. The perspective property adds a point of view based on the assumed distance between the user and the screen. If you set transform style to preserve 3D, it will render things in 3D instead of 2D. You can apply rotations and translations to any div and make your project even more exciting. A new way to center things is to set the display to grid and place content to center. And with that, I'll end this video. Leave a like if you like the content and share if you have friends. Subscribe if you want more such videos. I'll leave a link to all my code in the description and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.